Hey friends. Hey. Today we're going to make one of our favorite recipes that I accidentally threw together one night. Oh yeah. It's spaghetti squash, mm -hmm. chicken parmesan. Acorn squash is really easy to make after you cut the acorn squash. <laughs> it takes minutes and the acorn squash takes on the flavor mm -hmm. of what you make. The oh, next yeah. recipe we're going to make is an Asian-inspired pork acorn squash, mm. but today's Italian. So you want to cut the acorn squash in half without cutting Pinger. yourself. Yeah, without cutting your finger. And or hand it can be tricky. But I try to be really careful, especially if I'm recording, because I don't want to traumatize anybody. So I get a little cut going. And then I take the knife this direction and go all the way through if I can. Just sink it in there. Yeah. And then I come this direction and push down. You hear that crack on? Yeah. If you need help doing it, don't be afraid to ask for help. So I would I let not, Mike do it, but... Yeah, I don't do that knife. Okay, then I turn it over this way and push the handle of the knife down and keep continue cutting. You probably have a better way of doing this. Let me know. But I just keep going around, making sure my hand is nowhere near the blade. Sometimes I have to take it out and reposition it, which I'm going to do right now. Okay. I'm going to move it so that it's further out of it and then push it straight down. And come over here and push down. There, there you, go. you go. Look at that. See, I know. It was Look difficult, but I did it and didn't cut myself. So please don't we cut yourself. We call that a successful day. I know. No cutting of appendages. Then you're going to take out um, the seeds that are in it. You don't want to take out all the strings because that's what your spaghetti squash is. So you're going to take out the um, seeds. Do you want to try one? You can do one while I'm doing this. Sure, then we'll compare what is better. <laughs> he knows he can't do this well. I cannot do this well. You can, though. Push down. Oop, I spilled some. You just get in there and carve it out like... What else do you carve this? Uh, like a... Cantaloupe? Uh, like, no, this is, reminds me of like a pumpkin. Oh, yeah. You're carving out a pumpkin. Yeah, it, uh, cantaloupe is easier. Okay, so mine's done. Well, you got a head start on mine before me. <laughs> so please don't don't brag. The instant pot is the easiest way to make a spaghetti squash, but if you don't have an instant pot, make it however okay, else you want. I would like want. to point out that I see two seeds in there and mine zero. Zero seeds. So who did better? I'm gonna find some. See, look at that. Look at that. <laughs> there ain't, there ain't no seeds in that. There we go. You did better than last time. I know. I it. <laughs> um, you don't have an instant pot, as I was saying. You can cook it in the oven. We made it for years in the microwave. There's a lot of recipes out there that will show you how to do that. But in the instant pot, you want to take your trivet and put it in the bottom, which I couldn't find the last time I did it. If you can't find your trivet or don't have one, take some um, aluminum foil balls and ball them up and set it in there and then put the spaghetti squash on top of it. For those of you wondering what I was doing, there was a seed that she dropped on the floor. So I was covering up so the dogs don't get it. Just FYI. Because it'll be like, what's Mike doing? Next, you want to put a cup of water in your instant pot. And then you're just going to put the spaghetti squash in the instant pot. Anyway, it doesn't matter. It's all going to cook. You're going to set it on high pressure. For seven, seven minutes. minutes. Seven minutes. Seven minutes. And we'll see you back. We're back. Hey. So while the spaghetti squash is cooking, we're going to get the chicken and the sauce ready. And we use just bare, not bare naked like I've been saying. <laughs> That's another brand. Just bare, lightly breaded chicken strip, chicken breast original strips. That's a lot of words. 
But we get it at Sam's Club, but they also had, at one point, they had the nuggets. Mm -hmm. They have patties. Yeah. Whatever it is, use whatever. And you also don't, don't need to use this brand. We just use this brand because it's yummy and it's not highly breaded. So we're going to take a few of these and put it on the our cookie sheet and put it in the air fryer. So a serving of these is two of them, but these look smaller than normal. So we're making two, two to three servings. Mm -hmm. Let's do. Sure. Measure. Sure. There we go. So you put that in your air fryer as long as it takes, or bake it in the oven, or make it in a skillet, cook it in the microwave, however you do. Or use regular chicken breast, not breaded. Regular chicken breast works fine too. Chicken patties, whatever you have. And now I'm going to make the sauce. I do not buy can't jarred sauce anymore. And I'm going to just, I'm going to use two cans so I have enough. If I have any leftover, I'll freeze it. So I'm going to use two 15 ounce cans of sauce. And I'm going to get these all out of the way so we can see. Put it in a bowl. Put that in. Thank you. I'm contributing. I'm going to need a paper towel like I always do. <laughs> if you don't get messy, what are you doing? Okay, to this bowl, I wonder if you can still see. I'm going to add um, some green peppers. Again, I prep peppers, all colors, all at once. I cut them up. I either freeze them in the bag just as is and they work out fine. Or I put them on a, a layer on parchment paper on a cookie sheet and put them in the freezer. And then I put them in the bag. It doesn't matter. That's probably enough. So how many green peppers do I use? I don't know. As many as I want. It adds a lot of flavor. I don't think you can use too many. Be in my opinion. Right. But I'm going to go ahead and put these in a skillet and add some olive oil or avocado oil and cook them up a bit. You can also put them on. The Blackstone. <laughs> yes, you can. If you don't have one, I highly recommend it. I love my Blackstone. <laughs> I'm going to add some onions. The way you can add veggies to your, to your meals, you should. So this is just green peppers, onions. No, Send no. him to the skillet, add some avocado oil, turn it on, what? And, and go to, That's to me. cooking this up. That's me. I know. Okay, the rest that you add to your sauce are seasonings. Um, tomato paste. You can buy the squeezy tomato paste, but it's very expensive. You, a can of tomato paste, you don't always use it all. So I take it out of the tomato paste can, buy a tablespoon, I freeze it on a, again, a parchment lined cookie sheet, and I put it in the freezer like that. I don't even cover it up. I just put it in my freezer in my garage like that. And I do a few cans at a time. Now I'm out of it, so that's on my list to do. And um, when it's frozen, you peel it off and put it in the bag. So that's a way to ingredient prep. Meal prepping's great, but you, ingredient prepping also helps you to eat healthy at home. Now, <clears throat> now the word healthy that I said over and over, it depends on the person, what healthy means. Healthy to us is trying not to eat out, or maybe once a week eating out, but even making good choices when we're out and about. We don't count macros. We do know how many calories things are. Um, like once you know how many calories something is, when you go to eat it, you're like, do I want to use my calories on that? Like a if we go to Culver's, french fries, mashed potatoes. Mashed potatoes have less calories than french fries. I would choose mashed potatoes. Mike would choose french fries. French fries. <laughs> okay. <laughs> You're going to add seasonings. I'm going to add a little bit of salt. You know that I don't use a lot of salt because I don't like salt. So I'm going to do half teaspoon of salt. 
that's the air fryer. I'm going to use, for these two cans, that's quite a bit. So I'm going to use a tablespoon, a teaspoon of garlic. If you want to put a tablespoon in, go ahead. Pepper, a, a teaspoon of pepper. A basil, I'm going to use probably a teaspoon, a teaspoon of basil. Half a teaspoon of oregano. These are all guessing. You can taste it and decide what you want to add to it. A teaspoon of parsley. And red pepper flakes. You don't have to add this. I'm going to add it to give it a little bit of zoop. Uh, half a teaspoon. Uh, if, if it were just Mike, we'd add more. Since it's I me, would. we do not. Okay, so you're going to mix all that up. My um, tomato paste was thawed out, so it's good. Mix it all up, and then we'll see you back. Okay, the veggies are almost done, and they just need to be soft. You don't need to brown them. And the spaghetti squash is done. So you're going to um, vent. Vent it to let the steam out. So you can, those are done, add them to the sauce. And let the steam come out. And it says wait about 10 minutes. That's what we usually do is just wait a little bit. Okay. This is what I make for my sauce. You can put this on this all on the stove together. If we were eating this by itself, I would have. But this is actually going to go in the oven after we're done. So this is spaghetti sauce. And as always, you want to take a taste and see if it needs anything. Let me get a spoon for you. Me? Wait. Mm. It's perfect. Process. Who did the uh, vegetables? Who did the vegetables? That's right. <laughs> They're perfect. <laughs> okay. So we'll be back again. And we're back. Hey. So after I vented the steam, um, you want to wait until you can touch it. You take one at a time. And you, you want to use a fork or tongs or one of each. And you just want to flake the, what do you call it, the inside of a spaghetti squash? The noodles? Air quote? I can't, I don't the have fiber. hands. <laughs> so you want to flake this, and it's going to be your spaghetti. So I'm going to get it all flaked out and put it in a casserole. That's for this, this dish. We don't always put it in a casserole, no. but that's for this dish. I'm going to flake it out. Oh, there's a seed. I think this was the one you did. No, I don't think so. I'm pretty sure oh, there's a lot that, of seeds. I'm pretty sure that's one that you did. <laughs> there's a lot. Then, uh, yeah, that would be yours. <laughs> Mine had zero. Okay. Well, we didn't even see these, and who, whichever one it is. So, <laughs> oh, funny. We'll have to have a contest sometime. We already did that one. We already did. Yeah. And you won. It was on the on the video. <laughs> Okay, so you want to put this into the, the thing. Auto pan. <laughs> Technical well, terms. Pan. Words are hard sometimes. I know, I know. And this is hot, but I washed the outside of the acorn squash before, so no big deal if you want to do it inside the pan. Oh. Very, you just aren't doing a very good job of that, are you? Well, there's more seeds. I don't know why. Um. Actually, we've never had seeds in this. There's one around the back here. Too. Okay. You can eat them. It's not going to hurt you. So there's one. 
My mom, grandma said to grow a pumpkin in me. <laughs> Did she really? Yeah. <laughs> yep. That's what that. So that, that's why didn't you make? Them. Didn't you make them like though? Pumpkin. You made them though. You roasted them. You said your parent, your mom roasted the pumpkin seeds. Yeah, but I never ate them because my grandma never told me that I was growing the seed. Be careful what you say. Yeah. Your kids will have that with them forever. That's why I don't eat pumpkin. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't eat it because I don't like it. <laughs> but you do like it. I made pumpkin muffins and you... That's different than a pumpkin pie. Because yeah, you got other ingredients in there hiding the pumpkin flavor. A pumpkin pie is hiding stuff hiding it too. No, that's not the same. Well... FYI, I did my dream of him drinking coffee. He drank a caramel cinnamon latte yesterday. Yes, I did. So you never know. I think you can just scoot over. No. Okay, so there's these. I'm going to let my lovely husband take these over there. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's how much is in there. Is it a lot? Yeah, depends on the size of the. The squash. So I'm spreading this out in here. I'm cutting this up into. She snuck in cottage cheese in my uh, eggs, so <laughs> I didn't notice that either. So. I did, and I'll bring that recipe to you. So the egg casserole that I make that I cut into squares for sandwiches, I added some cottage cheese last week, and he didn't even notice. But nope. it added protein. Yep. That was good. And it was yummy. Okay. I need, speaking of cottage cheese, I need the cottage cheese. So you can use ricotta. I used cottage cheese last time. I made this when I just, invented this recipe oh i'm sure somebody else invented the recipe as well like this is just putting stuff together okay so we have the chicken all done okay so the chicken's all cut up we have all the parts of this this thing i have some grated parmesan cheese we're just going to assemble it now kind of like a lasagna but not okay we're back so the cottage cheese I'm going to put, oh, I don't know, a cup, a cup and a half of cottage cheese in a bowl. That's all. I'm going to add some seasoning, some garlic. How much? Mm. Half a teaspoon each. Do I have a recipe to link below? No. If you want me to send you a recipe that I can come up with, I can do that. Just let me know. Otherwise, use your heart. Whatever you think goes with uh, Italian. You always want to put less oregano than basil. So whatever you use for lasagna, that's what this is, but it's cottage cheese. You can blend up the cottage cheese, but it won't matter after it's cooked. So if you don't like the bumps of the cottage cheese, get a blender, blend it up, a hand blend, um, an individual you know, a smoothie blender. Okay, and then some cheese. I'm going to put quarter cup cheese. Mix it up. Okay. On top of the spaghetti squash, I'm going to add, we're going to spread out probably half of this. Spread that out. Mm -hmm. You're interfering with my spreading. <laughs> then we're going to spread out the cottage cheese. This would be like equivalent to your ricotta on your lasagna. Yeah, that's what I said. Did you hear me say that? No, I didn't hear you say that. <laughs> Okay, next, you're going to add the chicken. I'm just going to sprinkle it over. 
the top. Again, you can do your layers any way you want. This is just what I did. But there's no science. You kind of want to end with the sauce. There you go. Pour the sauce on. Notice how messy I am when I cook. Spread it around. Here, again, you could add mozzarella, and I probably would if I had some, but we don't have any right now. You could add cheddar. You could add Havarti. The mozzarella sticks. You could add, we do have mozzarella sticks, but that's not the same. Mm -hmm. I guess I could shred it. No. Okay. Perfect. And then sprinkle some more stuff. The cheese on top. You need some more, get it, or just be okay with what you have. When you're cooking, you do with what you got. Parmesan casserole. Now I'm going to put it in the oven, and everything is cooked. We're just going to warm it up. So I'm going to put it in the oven um, for 20 minutes, and then we'll be back to dish it up. All right. Hello. Hey. We're back. Yes. Um, I'm going to start a picture below what this looks like so you can see it because it's really it's hot. It's very hot. It's hot, but I did find some mozzarella, mozzarella cheese in the fridge. Not a lot, but enough. Yep. Okay, so I suggest you cut it with a sharp knife. So I'm going to cut. Technically, this is only like four servings, but that's a lot for four servings. So it'll probably be six servings for us, right? Yep. Because it's pretty filling. It is very filling. So you want to cut, cut it. And then I'm going to scoop it on the plate instead of that. And there it comes. Mm -hmm. Oh, yum. Big piping hot plate of chicken parmesan with spaghetti squash. Let's try it. So yeah. Get a little chicken in there. Yeah. Get some of the acorn squash, peppers. I don't see a chicken. There's a piece of chicken. Yep. We didn't cheers. Oh, okay. <laughs> You gonna get another bite? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Cheers. Mmm. Mmm. That's good stuff. It's That's hot. good stuff. Mmm. It was good. I don't know what I'm having for supper. Now, of course, you can use a bottle of jarred sauce if you'd like to. Um, you can cook it all day long. Instead of just like I did. Uh, mm. Yeah. Do what you want. Do what you got. This is America. This is just our version of chicken parmesan and spaghetti squash. Oh, yeah. Uh, like and uh, subscribe down here below. Sorry, I was eating. I was thinking about eating. We love you. And have a great week. Try to add some healthy food into your daily life. Bye. Bye. This is what it looks like on day two. It firms up quite a bit into looking more lasagna-ish. This is not a quick meal the way that we did it, but you could use jarred sauce and prep the spaghetti squash ahead of time and then put it together on a busy night. Or this makes a great meal prep ahead of time because it does heat up very nicely.